Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Exciting topic today, exciting topic every week. Continue to tune in, continue to benefit, and we're bringing you to the guests, and it'd be a shame if you lose out. So I'm not losing out, I'm here, and you're here with me, and we're excited because we're going to be talking about, first for the brothers, we're going to give some advice about marriage for all the single brothers. We want to motivate them to hurry up and get half of their deen fulfilled, and the sisters more precious than any commodity, any gem, jewel, or diamond. We're going to be giving some advice to the most beloved that are out there, our sisters in humanity. So the brothers and the sisters, we're balancing it out here on The Dean Show. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, right, peace be with you. Peace be with you, brother. Sheikh Omar Suleiman on the Dean Show. Inshallah, glad Pe to be here. Thank you for being with us. May the Creator God Almighty increase you in Amen. all the best in this life and the hereafter. People, you're an El instructor with El Maghrib Institute, Mishkat Institute, is this correct? And what's the other one? Uh, Mishkat University and also uh, Islamic Learning Foundation. You, you also teach a comparative religion class at. At Mishkah. Is Mishkah. Right. I mean, knowledge is very important, isn't it? Absolutely. In our, in our way of life, our deen, this way of life of all the messengers of God, it's not something esoteric that, you know, only a few elite understand. It's something for the layman, for the PhD, for the GED man, that it's clear, it's lucid, it's not nebulous. Is this right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's straightforward. Islam, Islam came so that the, uh, you know, a person who has a, uh, a low IQ and uh, as a Bedouin in the desert or, you know, hanging out in the hood can understand it. And also a PhD in physics can understand it and can comprehend it. Absolutely. I like what you said. The guy hanging out in the hood, yeah. <laughs> he'll understand this message, this lucid message, and the academic. Absolutely. But it's a problem now if it's hazy. It's something like, hold on, I just can't get it. You know, the uh, three gods and, you know, four, five, and a monkey god and, you know, worshiping them and... The creation, these things go against the nature of man, doesn't it? So the person who's been having a hard time, he's been reluctantly opposing this. That's because what God put in him, that natural disposition to recognize the truth, it's, it's, a, it's giving the red light. But now if they're like, one God, one, we're, these guys are just saying worship God. It's a, attracted to this. Is that right. what God put in us? Absolutely. And in fact, you know, if you study history, and this is one of the things that we do in my comparative religion class, if you study history, you'll actually, you know, there's this idea that, that uh, early men were wildly polytheistic. They would just worship whatever they feared or whatever they were amazed by. So they'd worship lightning, they'd worship animals, things of that sort. But actually, if you study history, you can find that monotheism was the inclination of men. And in fact, uh, the things that they saw that put them in awe, they saw them as manifestations of God's anger, or God's pleasure, and things of that sort. But nevertheless, they believed in one God. And then you find that uh, religion you know, degenerated into first uh, diatheism, which was Zoroastrianism, the concept of a good and evil God, and then it started to delve into polytheism and things of that sort. So this is, this is a fact, you know, if you study, or it's, I, I can't say it's a fact for a non-Muslim, but for Muslims it is a fact, certainly, and history has uh, many evidences in that regard. So we want to take off with this episode for our brothers in humanity that are tuning in. They might have just been changing the channel and they're like, you know, let me check out this show, The Dean Show, and they like the message. And maybe they've seen some shows in the past. And the whole crust of the matter is that the, it's calling a person to reflect about the purpose of life and the purpose of life should be given by the owner of life and the owner of life is the creator of the heavens and earth and he's told us to only worship him, the one God. Right. As soon as you add or delete, then this is a problem. You start to uh, add another associate to God, you make God into Jesus, or you make God having a son. This becomes a problem, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, so God doesn't have any sons, daughters, 
Does he have a DNA like us, like human beings, a zip Absolutely. code? He's like, you know, in the city here, there, everywhere. And he's not a man. So a and he's not a man. sisters would like that too. We don't say he's the man upstairs. No, he's, he, not, he's, he's not, not the man. He doesn't have no a human being. <laughs> he's no human being. And that right. just makes good old common sense. And now we got some people's attention. Now for the people who've also submitted to the Creator, you know, there are many things that are distracting us. So we love to give the advice first goes to ourselves because look, my ear is closer to to my mouth, so I'm taking it in first, you're taking it, and we want this to benefit all of mankind. Tell us now, we know that death is a reality, we're all going to die, there's a judgment day, okay, where true justice is going to be served, then there's the reward of paradise, and we want to be in paradise, and then there's the hellfire, we want to avoid that place. So it's best now that we critique ourselves, so that at the end, we don't end up in some serious trouble. Absolutely. The root of the problem usually can be solved if we go back to the guidance, the verbatim word of God, the Quran, and the Sunnah. There is a verse in there, in Surah Toba, 924. Now, I'm going to start it off. Can you take off from it and give us kind of the explanation where God Almighty is saying, say, if your fathers, your sons, your spouses, mm -hmm. the houses which you dwell in, and Allah is going over all the things that we're chasing in this life are dearer to you than God are dearer to you than his messenger and striving in his cause and wait till Allah brings his decision. Can you go ahead and expound on this? Because well, many times when we want to give the advice, the, the, the fancy house that the person wants to be in, you know, the material things, the things that they, want, they don't want to give up and it keeps them from submitting. So elaborate on this verse from the Quran. Well, I think that what God is, what God is telling us here is that it's only natural that you, you desire certain things. We all desire nice houses, we all desire nice cars, we all desire uh, beautiful spouses, or in the case of women, handsome spouses. We all desire these types of things. We all desire wealth, but they cannot supersede your love and your desire for God. And, you know, in essence, it's not, you know, and many times we found two extremes in religion. We found um, poverty being praised and a person uh, putting himself in poverty and asceticism and remaining celibate and things of that sort. Uh, that's, that's something that's praiseworthy. And then we find you know, which is the, the total opposite of that, which is that you're allowed to indulge in your desires and just throw God in there wherever you can, you know, and, and it's some super, you know, basically they call them church angels, street devils, yeah. right? You don't do anything during the week, you do nothing. And we can say masjid angels and, and street devils also. We've got it in the mosque too. You know, people want to live their lives uh, in a way that's totally contrary to the guidance of God. And then at the same time, to make themselves feel good about themselves, they'll go and they'll pray to Him and call upon Him. So in essence... What this verse means, it's, and, and it's the balance between the two, Islam is a religion of balance. It's not that you shouldn't own anything, it's that nothing should own you except Allah. So you can want that stuff, but make sure that it doesn't become dearer to you than God and it doesn't distract you from your purpose. So that's what we should be reflecting on, that this life is short, we do have a purpose, and we should be obeying the one who told us our purpose, the Creator. Right. So tell us now, moving along, why I mention this is because it's so important to really reflect because one of these things in the material world are distracting us. And, you know, at the end, you'll be with who you love, right? Absolutely. So we want to love Allah so we can be with Allah. Tell us for our sisters, or should we start with the brother? Let's start ladies first. You know, many of our sisters, may Allah preserve them, Amen. and they are the gems. They are the ones that we love so much, and Allah has honored the Muslim woman. She's not one that is out there parading herself and one who is out there for that attention from men. So he's given her certain things that will protect her. The hijab, for instance, right? She's establishing the prayer. She's trying to... Can we elaborate and talk about the importance of the Muslim woman having her Muslim identity and sticking to it and not taking the identity from pop culture, from Britney Spears, you know, from all the other things and people who will only lead her to destruction? Well, I think that, you know, it's, it's obviously all about perception. Many of the things that have, you know, it's, it's a hypocrisy in our culture that a nun, for example, can be covered from head to toe and can be considered being devout to God. And then a woman, a Muslim woman who's covered head to toe is considered, um, you know, oppressed and things of that sort. This is the greatest way to show your honor, to display your honor. Um, the struggle of, of women throughout history is that don't judge me for who I am on the outside. Look at me as a human being. Judge me for who I am on the inside. In essence, the hijab, that state of being, 
forces everyone to do that. You look at them for who you value them for who they are on the inside. Their their speech, you know, the way they think, the way the the, the skills that they have to offer to society. All of this is appreciated in Islam. Their scholarship. We have many women scholars in our history. It's all appreciated because, in essence, a woman was not judged in Islamic history by the amount of cleavage she was showing or how short her skirt was. It was it was about her devoutness. And as, you know, you get what you you get what you're looking for. You know, if you walk into you know when I take my daughter to. Uh, to a grocery store, she picks up a bag of chips, I'll let her eat that bag of chips and then at the end we'll just take it to the cashier and we'll just let them scan the bag, you know, the empty bag. And they won't mind that. But if I was to try to grab a mink coat or something of that sort that's preserved in glass and that's hidden and concealed, that cannot be touched except by a customer who looks serious and who can put something forth, you know, can demonstrate their seriousness, then that shows me that this is a thing of value. And it's not just for me. And many there's a misconception that hijab is because men can't control themselves, and it's like a punishment. But it's actually to honor the woman. It's to honor her, to elevate her, and um, to to give her her due her due right and her due honor. So alhamdulillah, we're we're you know we're thankful to Allah that you know, and I and we always challenge the non-Muslims to go and to ask Muslim sisters, was this forced upon you? Me as Imam, what I used to have to deal with all the time was parents who were afraid for their daughters who were insisting on wearing hijab. More so than, than parents who wanted their daughter to wear hijab. Mm. It was women who were proud, who were uh, going into various fields, medicine, law, whatever it was. And by the way, statistically speaking, Muslim women are second in, as a minority of women in terms of their earning in this country. Okay, so I mean, they're, they're very proud women, they're very devout women, and at the same time, alhamdulillah, uh, they honor themselves with what Allah has honored them with. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. I just want to say, very simple message. One of the beautiful things about our religion of Islam is the emphasis on direct ritual and prayer to God directly. There is no intermediary. The lights will go on after the party and the party will end. It's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. It's Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. Back here on The Dean Show with Sheikh Omar Suleiman. And we, you expounded on the verse from the Quran, which is the verbatim word of the Creator. Tamper-free, tamper-proof. We have it memorized by millions. It's preserved to this day. Is it right? Absolutely. So we talked about some of the things that you know Allah is is talking about, and now we mentioned the importance of you know being grateful and thankful through obedience to the Creator. But now let's say the argument comes in. Yes, okay, I agree. But now if I wear this modest way of dress, the hijab, that the whole attitude obviously goes with it. Now. I might lose my job. I might not be able to get to the next level in my business. My family, they are going to disown me, for example. Now, does that fit in conjunction with this verse? Can you elaborate on this, talk about it? Well, I think that you know, one of the things that we have to put out there from the start is that many people will not choose Islam because they're afraid of commitment. And in, in essence, what we see happening in our country today is, is uh, the rise of non-committal, uncommittal religions, or factions of religions, so non-denominationalism, uh, Unitarianism, so on and so forth. And, and although the message might be good, uh, whenever you look at it from a general perspective, it doesn't offer any specifics of how to draw close to God. So yes, sometimes religion will be inconvenient in this worldly life you will have to make sacrifices, you will have to struggle because in, any, in, in life anything that you want to succeed in you're going to have to make some sacrifices. You want to become a better businessman, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of time, you're going to have to sacrifice some friends you know, that are holding you back. Uh, so yes, you will make sacrifices but at the same time certainly uh, I, countless times you, know, you see Muslim women who started off wearing the hijab who started off concealing themselves, and yes, they faced massive opposition, and then alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened ways for them and with time, and the same people that were disparaging them for wearing the hijab actually came to respect them for wearing the hijab. I look at my mother, mm -hmm. may Allah have mercy on her, as, as a primary example of that. When she wore hijab, she was the first in her family to wear hijab, and she was criticized, she was uh, looked at in such a derogatory way, and, and you know, by many parts, 
of her family, but alhamdulillah, they came to admire her and respect her for, hijab, for her hijab. So much so that when she passed away, some of her family members were asking for some of her hijabs. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. So Allah makes it, either Allah will make it easy for you in this life, or the message and the blessing will carry over after you pass away, and that will reward you in your eternal life and your, in your hereafter, inshallah. But you've got to make sacrifices. Men have to make sacrifices too. You know, it's not just for women to do. Yeah. Men have to make sacrifices too. Um, and you've got to understand that Islam does require a level of commitments. There's no doubt about it. So I like what you said, uh, sacrifice. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, the prophet Abraham, he was called to sacrifice. And this was a great test. So all of us in our lives were called by Allah. Allah wants to see, is it true that are we willing to sacrifice? What's more important? You know, we love our parents. We love, we have to, we can't enter, you know, paradise is at the feet of your mother. So you got to respect your parents. But how do you now, if let's say you have opposition from your father and your mother, mm -hmm. You know, and your love is strong for them, but now is it the point where you have to draw a line and say, I love you, and you kiss the feet of your mother, and you honor them, but you say, I love Allah more, and I have to obey Allah. Do you just have to be firm about it? So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, La ta'ata li fi ma'asiyat al which means you, there is no obedience to a creation when it entails the disobedience of the Creator. Um, however, Islam never gives you the permission to be abusive towards your parents. Never. And that's why Allah says in the Quran, uh, if they tell you to do something which is against what Allah has told you to do, just don't follow them in that. But you still need to honor them. You still need to uh, give them your companionship. You still need to kiss their hands and kiss their foreheads and, and try to be the best son or daughter that you can be. And by the way, that wins their hearts. Many times we've seen Muslims, new Muslims, actually win the hearts of their non-Muslim parents who were Islamophobes by their character because they saw the massive change in character you know in their in, in, in the lives of their children so that is a way of winning their hearts and we don't just do it to win their hearts it's an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be that person mm -hmm. to be to, to honor them and to love them but just to say look I'm sorry I just can't do it here Ibrahim Islam honored his father and loved his father even though his father uh, was out to kill him he still honored him and loved him and so, I mean, that's, that's the point. You know, you, you try your best. Whatever you can do, you do. You do. Definitely. Tell us now, we're going to talk about the brothers now. We talked a little bit about the sisters. Ladies first, the brothers now that we also want to encourage who are single. And we know that this is, is it true, is half of your dean yes. getting married? So many of us have gotten sucked in with many of the negative things that are out there. Everywhere you go, you got some naked woman on a billboard. You can't even go to Jewel Dominic's Osco and you got a naked magazine in front of you, you know what I mean? And I know a brother personally that go, when, he, when he's there, I, he lowers his gaze, he hates in his heart, but he'll take a flower magazine and cover her up. <laughs> so, you know, this is our way of just doing a little bit, you know? And I'm sure the good people who are out there, you know, people of other faiths, they can understand this moral decline of society, Jews right. and Christians. So we don't like that our women are out there, you know, they're, they're being prostituted. It's not right. But now how can the brothers defend themselves? Allah's given us the formula and they're just, their urge is coming out and they're boiling up inside. And you know what? This is a major sin if you fall into boyfriend, girlfriend, and you're uh, involved in illegal sexual intercourse. Pornography is on the rise. No Muslim should have any part in this. What are your comments and suggestions? What I would say is, you know, what Shaitan tries you to tries to do with you. And you know, when, when the whole John Edwards scandal happened, there mm -hmm. was a whole. I remember Time Magazine or Newsweek did a whole issue on the psychology of a cheater. And in essence, when a person cheats, what they try to do is they try to ignore reality and they try to ignore the consequences of their actions. So, for example, a person that's cheating on his wife will not pull out his wallet and show the woman that he's cheating with the pictures of his kids and things of that sort. He wants to ignore reality. He wants to keep that put away. Right? He's going to keep his cell phone on silent. He's not going to be able to talk on the phone and things of that sort with us. But he wants to ignore reality and, and ignore the consequences of his actions so that he can ignore a temporary pleasure. That's the struggle of life with Shaytan. Uh, with the devil and, and of course in this regard. So in uh, pornography, um, you know, engaging in, in, in premarital relationships, this has life changing, you know, this will damage your entire life. Um, in essence, every relationship you go through, uh, a part of you will die with that relationship. You would have had some secrets that you've given to the other person. You would have, you know, had a level of trust now that's going to, to go down the drain. Um, 
he would have exposed certain things to that person. And so, I mean, every time you go through one of those, a part of you dies. Your capacity to love dies. You become more suspicious of the next partner, the next partner, the next partner. You become vulnerable. Um, in one medical journal, um, I forgot which university, they said that a woman who loses, uh, who loses her virginity by the age, in, while still in high school, is likely to have up to 17 partners in the next five years. Wow, yeah. 17. Yeah, because of the vulnerability, the, the feeling of vulnerability. So this is for brothers and sisters. You go through a relationship, you go through these things, it will have damaging effects on your life. In essence, um, even in, in marriage, even in marriage, you know, you, you'll still have those, those lusts, you'll still have those, you know, you'll still be looking all over the place and you won't be satisfied at home. And the last You'll thing you want is to, yeah. You, and that's what's happening here in this, you know, here today, unfortunately, an over 50% divorce rate in this country. That means when you walk down the aisle in, in the United States, in our country, uh, you know, there's a greater than half of a, there's a greater than half chance that that person is going to be battling you in court for custody or for your wealth. Half a chance. Yeah, more than 50%. The divorce rate has risen, risen above 50% at this point. But don't stop there. We know Islam is the self-defense to all of this right. negativity, evil that happens. And now we look at studies. You mentioned a study from Harvard. Talk about this study of people who have premarital sex and the chances of their relationship coming to an end just because of this. And Islam prevents this from happening if you just follow the way of life from the Creator. Talk about this study from Harvard. Absolutely. Well, uh, again, there's like a 69% chance or something that your uh, your 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 marriage will fail. 79%. Right. Right. Absolutely. Well, I, I think it's it's clear. You know, imagine a society. Just imagine. And I'm not. Uh, unfortunately, a, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll start to we'll start to look at societies that already exist. I'm not talking about that. And it's not a utopian vision. We're talking about how to have happiness in the home. If the husband is not looking all over the place and his only uh, source of sexual satisfaction is his wife. You know, when he comes home, he looks at her, and Islam also encourages the spouses to look good for each other in the home. You know, Abdullah ibn Abbas, the great companion, may Allah be pleased with him. Mm -hmm. Before he would walk into the house, he would start combing his hair, perfume himself, fix his clothes up, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said, look, I like to look good for my wife just as I like her to look good for me. You know, where, there's, where this has encouraged uh, the spouses to dress for one another. So you have the husband, who walks into the house with and takes off his clothes right away with ironically with what's called the wife beater you know yeah. then you've got the wife uh, in her in her uh, Winnie the Pooh pajamas with cream all over her face whenever the husband comes home and he's just seeing all those billboards that you're talking about now he's looking at his wife in that state and she's saying where have you been and what's wrong with you then you know you're obviously creating something very unhealthy so the wife will look elsewhere for satisfaction the husband will look elsewhere for satisfaction whether it's in the form of, of virtual satisfaction, in the form of pornography, which unfortunately is, you know, is killing, killing uh, not just our youth today, our married couples today. It has life-altering effects. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, the, the, you just will never be able to have happiness in your marriage. So that's why Islam encourages you, focus your gaze on your spouse. Whenever you, you get married, you should look for someone. One of the things that you should look for is someone that you're attracted to. There's mm -hmm. no doubt about it. But once you're, once you're there, you're there. That's it. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with sure. more Absolutely, here on yeah. The Dean Show. One God, worship Him alone. Do what He wants you to do. Put your desires, this thing inside you that just wants this and wants that and you just can't get enough. You know what? You'll never get enough until the dirt's in your mouth. Don't let it come to that. Be sincere and honest. Ask the one who created you to guide you. It's the first step. Put off chasing all the women and the good times and the parties and this and that. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah, don't wait. You never know if death would come today for you or not. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Omar Suleiman. Thank you for being with us once again. We all could, uh, we're almost out of, out of time. These sessions are very short, so we encourage people to continue tuning in to the Dean Show and to follow up with maybe taking some of your classes at the Mishkat.com. Mishkat University. Mishkat University. El Maghrib, El Maghrib if, if it's ever in, in, in town. Yeah, so I, because knowledge, I mean, it's not about just being one who's Muslim by name. It's about seeking knowledge, being upon right. knowledge, people of action. Right. And you need to have not only the good intention, but knowledge precedes actions. Is that correct? Right. Absolutely. So now that we have the knowledge, we know that Islam is the way of life that was lived throughout time by all the messengers of God, submission to the one God, 
and we have it preserved to this day, tamper free, tamper proof. It's based on evidence, and if anyone takes a scientific analytical approach, they'll come to the same conclusion that you did. You read the Bible, and you went through many different uh, religions doing a comparative study, and you concluded, I've concluded, 1.5 billion people concluded this is the way of life from the Creator. It's not man-made because we shouldn't have to follow an organized religion organized by men, but from the Creator. Now tell us, we know this, and now we want to stay away from pornography, gambling, alcohol, and all the evil things that produce evil results. And one of the best ways for a man is to get married. Here comes the question. Brothers now, okay, the sister, you know, she's a, let's say, we're all struggling. We all have deficiencies, right? Now the brother's looking for a 10 in beauty. He's looking for a 10 in Dean. But you know what? It's been 10 years. It's been 10 years he's looking now. Now either the brother's fasting every day because we know what's bombarding us out there, right? right? And it's really difficult. So, or the brother... You know, he might be indulging in pornography and self... We're, we're just keeping it real on the Dean Show. Right. Right, because we have real issues. So this is not something that is a joke. It's something serious. Tell us now, is this something detrimental to him finding the woman? Because now, for the lesser evil, he might have put this in his mind. He's enjoying the pornography. And now he takes a look at his sister and he's like, no, that's not for me. And he keeps on. He's been going through this for 10 years. Is it a problem with him? And is this hindering his path, the pornography, the self-pleasure, and all this? Uh, well, the, the thing is, is that, you know, uh, in the issue of marriage, you know, the first thing that, if you go to a car dealership, what's the first thing the dealer's going to try to get you to do? Take it for a test drive. Take the test drive. Yeah. You know, enjoy the leather seating, enjoy the rims, enjoy this, enjoy that, so that you ignore the price tag and you ignore the, uh, the, the things that really make it count. Um, and in essence... Uh, and, and in no way, shape, or form am I comparing a sister or a brother to a used car or to a car. <laughs> in essence, what the car dealer wants to make you do is make an emotional decision rather than a rational decision. And Islam wants you to make a rational decision. And in order to make that rational decision, you need to avoid things that would distract you, that would hurt your rationality. So obviously when you look at these glorified um, individuals online, uh, people that aren't real looking, you know, and and you know, you indulge in that, then nothing is going to satisfy the eye anymore. And again, everything Allah legislates is for your own good also. It's for your own good in this world. So Allah is trying to make it easy for you. So what I would say to those people, because look, I mean, let's face it, pornography and those types of, it's, it's so rampant and people are struggling with it. That would even be good in other areas. They're good Muslims, but they're struggling with that. Just think about the consequences with God. Think about having to meet Allah and having to have that pornography played in front of you and having to explain to Allah that I was watching this in front of you. Because Allah was watching you the whole time. You know, it would get awkward if someone was watching you mm -hmm. while you were watching pornography. Yeah. Allah was watching you. So this is killing your relationship with God. Because in essence, back to the psychology of a cheater, you're purposely trying to ignore God at those moments. No one is sitting there reading Quran while they're watching pornography or remembering God. They're trying to forget that God's watching them at that, at that moment. So... Remember God is watching you. And as a scholar said, Anta turaqib, turaqib Allah, You are in observance of Allah and Allah is in observance of you. you know, so that's, that's what I would say to those brothers. And that way, inshallah, whenever the time comes, you save yourself for the right sister. Sister, save yourself for the right brother. Then inshallah, you would find that, uh, you would find that satisfaction in looking at them and you would find that satisfaction in being with them. And the superficial uh, aspects of beauty would definitely go away but the inner beauty would be your focus and that would allow the person to remain beautiful in your eyes for the rest of your life inshallah definitely before we go to uh, before we cut out the person now we should be striving deen is the most important deen islam the person is praying five times the woman is she's in the islam she's not half 50 50 ramadan muslims you know what i mean so they're in the deen now let's say she's not or he's not a 10 they might be a seven lower your standards well obviously there needs to be some attraction correct Right. But now if we're like putting this person, we want a J-Lo, we want, you know, uh, what we perceive as something that's the most beautiful paintbrush women, you know what I mean, or paintbrush men, right? The Brad Pitts and whatever. Uh, but if you see some of these people in person, 
You know, they're miserable, and most of them are on drugs. And if you see them without committing, suicide, committing suicide, and if you really see them at maybe if you went to one of these after parties, we're not supposed to be going, but you see them, you're like, man, this person's actually ugly. Or at the airport, <laughs> they don't have, or at the yeah, airport. I've seen, a, I've You've seen, seen them. plenty of them at the airport. I'm like, this is not what I thought this was supposed to be. A no. person who submitted to God, they got newer coming out of their face, light coming. Absolutely. So a person that's disobeying God, being living a legal lifestyle, they don't have newer, but they're painted up, paintbrush people, right? So now if you Look at a person, you really want to fulfill half your dean, and we're trying to motivate the brothers and sisters. So now you put your criteria, dean is first, and you lower your expectation a little bit. Man, if you do this for Allah, you do it right. You know what I mean? Allah is the one that puts love is in the heart. Not saying that you go with someone that's totally, you can't even just you know, look at them. But man, there's something a little All bit right. there. Do you want to just... Go forward instead of another 20 years and you're missing out having children, you're missing out on all, the, all, the, all of this good? Well, the, the real talk is that, you know what, you shouldn't marry someone that you're completely unattracted to. Yeah. Okay, so it's important, but the basis of your pursuit should be religion and character. Religion the, and character. That's what the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said. You look for those two things. In essence, character, the word khuluq in Islam, uh, and this is a linguistic, you know, this is some lingo, but the word khuluq in Islam means inner beauty, and khalq means outer beauty. So we make the dua, Allahumma kama ahsanta khalqi ahsan khuluqi. Oh Allah, as you've beautified my outside, beautify my inside. So we look for we look for the inner beauty of a person, the way that they treat their parents, the way they treat people, the way they carry themselves. Those are manifestations of inner beauty and character. And then we consider the other aspects. We consider beauty, we consider status, we consider those things. But again, if, if the first two are there, the deen and the khuluq, the religion and the character, then the other things you know, need to be satisfactory. You can't find a person who's perfect in all categories. That's for Jannah. That's for Jannah. That's yeah. for Jannah. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're out of time. I wish we can hang out some more. I'm really Absolutely. benefiting. Thank I'm sure the viewers are also. May God Thank Almighty you. the Creator okay. reward you. Thank you for, you. Having, me. Thank you for being with us. Uh, again, go and take his class. I'm gonna, do you have a class coming up on comparative religion? Uh, actually, I'm starting right now, so, uh, semester right now, compared to religion. What's the, Mishka what, University. Doctrine. What's it called? Uh, it's called Religions and Doctrines. Religions and Doctrines? Yeah. When does it start? Uh, it's starting in a few weeks. Actually. In a few weeks? How can people sign up? Uh, you could go to MishkaUniversity.com, and also I'll be teaching a course with ILFHouston.org. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be online uh, about refuting misconceptions about Islam. And then, of course, with the Maghrib Institute, I'm focusing on spirituality. And things now, the like online that. one, you got more room for people? Yeah, I, can, I, can I join this class? Absolutely. Every Tuesday night. I want to come. I want to learn. I want to benefit. I love this topic when we talk about just yeah, Islam yeah. in general, but especially when we talk about comparative religions. I'll see you there, inshallah, God willing. I'll see you there, too. Make sure you're, you're here with our brother, our sheikh, so we can benefit and get the knowledge to be closer to Allah. We'll see you next time, inshallah, on the Deen Show. Absolutely. Okay. Salaam alaikum. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. I got to benefit, inshallah, God willing, you did also continue to tune in here every week. And the main message is, look, this life is short. We're going to die. There's a day of judgment, and then there's the reward of paradise. And we want to get to paradise because this life is transitory. It's going to pass. Everything's in the past tense. I was there, been there, done that. And at the end, you're a loser because you lose this life, then you lose the next. Don't lose the next life for this life. Be the best that you can in this life, but prepare for the next. Prepare to meet your Creator. And the only way that you can be successful is by doing all the good that He's told us to do. Continue to tune in, get the new DVD, Dunya to Deen. And if you like what we had to say and you want to embrace the way of life of all the messengers of God, don't hesitate. Be courageous enough. It's that simple call to worship the Creator, not His creation. Give us the call, 1-800-662, right here, Islam. Islam and you will end up being truly living your purpose being successful in this life and the next we'll see you next time inshallah God willing peace be unto you